Hello everyone this is part 8 of what if Naruto and Hanata trained together and a spark happened, and I hope you guys enjoy this video and to like, to subscribe, to share, and check out the playlist, to see more comment down below, now let's start the, intro. Itachi's eyes showed surprised, and maybe a little fear, as his genjutsu shattered, then reformed around him. The zombies attacking Sasuke turned, and began to advance on their killer. More of his victims excised themselves from the ground. Mikoto Uchiha reached her son first. Though she was not originally from the Uchiha clan, that fact had not spared her. With the soft tissue stripped from her distal phalanges, her finger bones tore into his skin and muscle like dull knives. She ripped chunks of flesh from his left arm, discarding them like offal. His body regenerated as quickly as it was wounded, giving the betrayed matriarch the ability to continue tormenting her offspring. Though he knew the zombies were illusions, Itachi could not deny the pain. He attempted to break free of the Tsukiyomi, but found he could not. Sasuke's hate-fueled vision was too strong. Only a handful of seconds passed in the real world, but Itachi felt as if he had been flayed alive continuously for two full days. He was breathing hard, and could not stand up straight. He even had some minor cuts and bruises. How did you do that question mark how did you reverse the Tsukiyomi question mark? The elder traitor panted, how did you stop me from breaking free question mark? Research, and bit of luck, the younger Uchiha answered glibly. His color had drained, and he had a drop of blood in the corner of his left eye but he was not breathing hard, and was moving almost normally. He was waiting for his brother to collapse, but despite his sore health, Itachi did not appear to be ready to become comatose. I won't be fainting like you or Kakashi, Itachi exhaled roughly, you may have found an interesting variation of the Tsukiyomi, but have not sufficiently mastered the technique to do serious mental damage to the target. It doesn't matter, Sasuke dropped into a stance, you are in no shape to fight me. Not yet, Itachi's mouth twitched ever so slightly upwards. The Mangekyo Sharingan began to rotate, and Itachi steadied. Beginning on his hands and feet, all of his injuries began to move up his body. When they met his eyes, the bites, cuts and bruises vanished, as if sucked down a drain. In the brief second it's Sasuke to recover from his surprise, his brother was fully healed. The Akatsuki ninja stretched, cracking his elbows. His chakra nearly exhausted, Sasuke physically attacked again. This time his attacks were more precise, and Itachi was forced to actively block instead of simply dodging. Orokimaru's student aimed a double snap kick, stabbing his right foot at his enemy's stomach and then neck. The adult shinobi deflected the first shot with his hand, and leaned back to avoid the second. Sasuke threw his body back into a side aerial, and his left foot connected with Itachi's chin. But the weak attack did not deter the former Anbu leader, and while his brother was still upside down, Itachi's right fist struck the teen's left temple. His head ringing and his acrobatics disrupted, Sasuke barely managed to land on his feet. The firstborn sibling stepped in, slamming his elbow into his opponent's solar plexus. His hand snapped up, and the back of his knuckles struck Sasuke's nose, nearly breaking it. Sasuke attempted to grab his brother's wrist, to flip him into the wall. But Itachi turned grip around, using the pressure point on the back of Sasuke's hand to immobilize the youth long enough to land a hard side thrust kick to the younger man's lower spine. The Avenger felt his legs going numb, but managed to score a moderate blow to Itachi's retreating knee. Forced to admit his brother's reach and strength gave him an edge in Taijutsu, Sasuke spent a small amount of his remaining chakra, and summoned a very specific serpent. The python wrapped around his arm, and opened its mouth wide. It disgorged a familiar long sword into Sasuke's waiting hand. So, you have even claimed the Kusanagi from Orokimaru, Itachi noted, I wonder how this one will fare question mark. He reached back and drew his Anbu katana from its shoulder holster, hidden under his Akatsuki robe. I'm going to let you in on a little secret, Itachi said, conspiratorially, the blades of the Anbu Black Ops carrier copies of a sword made, by the Murasame clan, for the first leader of the Anbu squad the man who would later become the second Hokage. Since then, that sword has been passed down to each new leader. That is until I took it with me when I left. An infamous legendary sword, versus a secret one. I am interested to see which will win. 
Atachi slashed at his brother's chest, but Sasuke blocked the simple attack with his blade. He slid Kusanagi along the Anbu blade, trying to angle for a stab into his target's stomach. Atachi simply stepped back, and frowned when the weak dodge worked. He tested it, keeping his distance, but leaving himself open. Sasuke continued to attempt to get close enough to cut his brother. You don't even know how to use that, do you question mark? Atachi sighed, just like the Mangekyo, a tool you acquired, but cannot use properly. Whereas I know how to use this katana. He reached out, and almost gently tapped Sasuke's left shoulder with the flat of his blade. A vibration spread out from the point of contact, causing him great pain and weakness. The Ashura sends out a sonic pulse, causing the victim's cells to tear themselves apart. With your new regenerative powers, it probably won't be as damaging to you as it is to most people. He swung again, knocking aside Kusanagi, slicing the left side of his brother's chest shallowly. The shockwave struck Sasuke's heart, and he dropped to his knees. The younger ninja rolled back, keeping Orokimaru's sword between himself and Atachi. That would have killed most people. Atachi pressed his assault, repeatedly striking the other rogue's limbs. Sasuke's stolen healing abilities were not able to keep up, and along the way he lost his grip on the grass cutter. Finally, Atachi kicked him hard in the ribs, knocking him on his back. It seems like Kissim is finished. I guess that means I have to get back to work, he stepped next to his younger sibling, aiming Ashura at his forehead, but you have become stronger. Maybe next time, you will be a challenge. If you are foolish enough to come after me again. If you can find someone to teach you, having forsaken the leaf and killed Orokimaru. Atachi stabbed, and Sasuke's world went black. Happy question mark, Kissim asked, as Atachi exited the dojo. Satisfied, Atachi counted, his growth is impressive. He might one day be powerful enough to justify this effort. He moved deftly around the splatters of blood and water in the entry room, and opened the sealed portal. But as he stepped outside, he stumbled. His shark-like ally was surprised as a number of punctures appeared on Atachi's body. After that, the cuts and bruises caused by the Tsukiyomi returned. Atachi, those injuries, the mist rogue looks mildly concerned as the leaf traitor leaned against the wall for support. Sasuke managed to surprise me. I was forced to use Sasori to send my wounds into the future, Atachi grinned ironically, if he hadn't wasted so much chakra in the beginning of the fight, he might have been able to kill me. Kissim looked surprised. Help me, Atachi instructed, we must be gone before he awakens. He cannot know how close he came to winning. He must continue to strive, or he won't be worthy. Kissim gave his superior a shoulder to lean on, and the two quickly left. By the time he returned to reality, all of the cuts Atachi had inflicted were gone. But his body was still sore. He stood slowly, though he was not sure why he bothered. He trudged out of the dojo, not even seeing where he was going. The foyer was a mess. Blood spattered the floor, walls, and ceiling. He recognized parts of Sugutsu, but barely half of the swordsmen remained. And both of the stolen swords were gone, presumably taken by Kissim. Karen was almost intact, but her right leg had been severed above the hip, and the wound no longer bled. As he made his way to the entrance, a weak, hollow cough caught his attention. He turned, and saw a shallow rise and fall in Karen's. With speed he would not have thought he still possessed, he crossed to the girl. He knelt beside her. Her left eye socket was a mess, but her remaining eye fell on him. Sasuke-chan, she gasped, so, you won. No, his voice was flat, I was merely spared. Again. Oh. She was saddened. Then her broken face brightened, but we can try, her statement was broken by a bloody cough, again. Sasuke was silent, and the red-haired Kunoiki correctly read his silence. Not we, she offered, I'm not going to make it, am I? He shook his head, no. Maybe if those two were here, they could work another miracle. But if they were here? Sasuke-chan question mark, Karen's voice was even weaker. He looked back at her again, can you do one thing for me question mark? Yes, his voice almost cracked. In all the times you shared my bed, you never kissed me above the neck. He nodded, it was his way to avoid intimacy, even while he used her for his own needs, and led her on to ensure her loyalty. Can you, just once, kiss my cheek question mark or my forehead question mark, she asked. 
He reached down, and shifted her hair to cover her ruined eye. Then he moved slightly, hovering over her face. Then he bent down low, and pressed his lips to hers. Her blood tasted salty. After a few tender seconds, he pulled away. See, she mixed coughing and laughing, I knew you love. The taunt caught in her throat, rattling around with her final breath. Sasuke gently closed her eye, and stood again. He withdrew a flask of oil and dashed it on the floor. He walked unevenly to the door, and exited the compound. Before the barrier closed, he used his chakra to send a small spark back. As he reached the edge of the forest the ancient Uchiha stronghold was engulfed in fire. Sasuke did not look back. All right, I need to go report to the Hokage, Kakashi said after they passed the main gates of the Konohagakur. He took off in the direction of the ninja operations building. I don't know about the rest of you, but I need a real shower, Sakura complained, I'll see you all later. The other two girls nodded, and they started to disperse. Hanata, Naruto stopped her. She turned back to look at him, and Kiba and Hanabi also stopped. With the audience, the blonde teen suddenly became nervous. Um, if you're not busy, I was wondering, he paused, glancing sideways at the girl's sister and teammate. Both pretended they were not listening. Well, I was wondering if you wanted to do something tonight, question mark. What question mark? Hanata turned bright red, and began tapping her fingers. But, ah, uh, don't you need to k? Keep practicing, she cursed herself silently, internally, she had thought she was past stammering in front of him. No, I think Hanabi would agree that we both need a little rest after the last four days. Oh, then, she steadied herself, of course. I'd be happy to. Okay, I'll pick you up at six. I will see you then, the elder Hugo nodded. Naruto started to run in the direction of his apartment. As his back receded, Hanata gave into the weakness in her knees and sloughed slightly. Congratulations, big sister, Hanabi sounded genuinely happy for the shy kunoiki. Oh, Hanata, Naruto had stopped, and shouted for her attention. She looked at him. Wear something nice, but that you can still move around in, okay question mark, he yelled. She colored again, but gave him an exaggerated nod. I wonder what he meant by that question mark, Kiba chuckled, needling his friend slightly. Naruto arrived outside the Hugo Manor at two minutes to six. He was wearing a light blue button-down shirt, knee-length khaki shorts, and white and blue sneakers. The genin paused, unsure if he should knock, or just wait. Before he could decide, the door slid open, and Hanabi greeted him. The girl wore a sly look. My sister will be out in a minute, she told him, holding back a grin. He nodded, confused by her demeanor. It wasn't like he hadn't been over there often enough before. A few seconds later, the elder Hugo girl appeared. Her hair was braided again, and her lips looked pinker than usual. She wore a sheath dress in a deep navy blue. It was held up by three straps on either side, and was tight across her ample bosom and toned stomach. At her hips, it flared just enough to allow the kunoiki to take a full stride. Her feet were covered by pumps of a matching blue, with a slight rise in the heel. Naruto stared at her, blushing slightly, which in turn caused her to turn red. Naruto question mark, she prompted him. Oh, sorry, Hanata. It's just, he took a deep breath and steadied himself. You are beautiful, Hanata, he said, intensely and formally. Her blush deepened and she murmured a quiet thanks. When she reached back to close the door, she saw Hanabi smirking at her. Hanata slammed the door in her face. Shall we question mark? Yes. She nodded happily. He extended his left hand, and she took it. Hanata was not sure if Naruto was trying to obfuscate the destination, or if he was simply lost. They passed Ichiraku Ramen twice. Finally, he stopped them at an intersection just off the village square. We're here, he announced. She looked around, but none of the four buildings seemed particularly likely. A bookstore, a clothing shop, a bakery, and the golden shoe, a fancy restaurant and dance hall. She started towards the bakery, but he tugged her hand gently. Not there, he smiled broadly, turned her gently towards the golden shoe, Hanata Hugo, will you join me for a night of dinner and dancing? Question mark. She was surprised by the invitation. I thought you hated dancing, she protested lightly, in the academy, you always skipped infiltration class, when we had dance lessons. I'd like to think I'm a little more mature than back then, 
He remembered, I always told myself dancing wasn't macho, or important. But to be honest, I was also afraid no one would be my partner. I would have, she said quietly. Well, you can be my partner now, he offered, but then paused in doubt, unless you don't want to question Mark. Oh, no, she said quickly, I love dancing, and I'd be happy to be your partner. As they turned towards the club, she asked, so how did you learn to dance? Question mark. Well, the ability to fit in at a party is only one facet of learning to dance, Jiraiya told the boy, dancing is all about rhythm, precise movement, and depending on the style of dance, strength and agility. A ninja who can master dancing will be a stronger warrior. Naruto nodded, considering how dancing could help with taijutsu, or in controlling the flow of battle. But most importantly, the Sanan's teacher face changed into his lecherous face, the ladies love a man who can dance. When the old pervert found out I couldn't dance, he stopped all the rest of my training until I learned. I found myself enjoying it, a lot more than I thought I would, he answered, I haven't much of a chance, since I got back to the village. I decided if I wanted to go dancing, I would have to take the initiative. And I couldn't think of anyone I'd rather cut a rug with. She nodded, not entirely sure how to take the comment, or how it reflected on his intentions for the evening. Then she forced herself to relax, whether this was a first date or just two friends going out, she was going to enjoy the evening, and the chance to spend more time with him. And this was something he had not shared with anyone else, and that made her happy. Is that Naruto and Hanata question mark, Ino noticed, as she and Choji exited the bakery, going into the golden shoe question mark we should follow them. She started to cross the street, until she noticed he was no longer beside her. She turned back, and he had a disappointed look on his face. First, he said, I doubt the two of us together can afford that place. I'm surprised Naruto can. And second, if you are going to spy on Naruto and Hanata, you don't need me. She froze at that. It had taken her months of pressuring and pleading to get him to agree to this date. And he had a point. There was no need to throw this away over those two. Right, the movie, the confident blonde girl smiled at her sturdy paramour, we don't want to be late. Naruto had obviously prepared, because as soon as they entered, a hostess lead them to a table. After they were seated, a waitress dropped off a pitcher of water, two glasses, and menus. Hanata opened the fancy, leather-bound pamphlet, and her white eyes went wide. Naruto, it's so expensive, she whispered. He looked at his own menu, and nodded, it is a little pricey. But you gotta splurge every once in a while, right? She nodded back, mildly amazed. But she trusted him, and if she was honest with herself, she was flattered. After looking over the list of meals briefly, Naruto set down his menu, and Hanata hurried to make her decision. I'll have the 12-ounce sirloin, medium, with the sautéed mushrooms and baby red potatoes, Naruto said swiftly, once their server returned, and can I also get a small bowl of pear juice? The order taker looked surprised by the final request, but took it down, warning him, I'm not sure, but I'll ask. She turned her attention to Hanata, and for the young lady question mark. What question mark? She jumped, slightly, oh, I'll have the 8-ounce sirloin, medium well, garlic mashed potatoes, and the steamed pea pods. Anything to drink? Question mark, their attendant prompted. Yeah, a small glass of skim milk with the meal, Naruto ordered. The waitress aired an eyebrow, and looked over to Hanata. I'll have the same. She left to place their order, and the pair started talking quietly while they waited. He asked her for more details about her second Chunin exam, and she wanted to know about his dance lessons. The two teens did not realize they were being watched. Oh, shit, the purple-haired Jonan hissed, sliding further into her chair, what are they doing here question mark? Who question mark, her partner started to turn, but she grabbed his arm to stop him. They'll see, she counted. Anko, who is it question mark, he asked again, not looking but a touch more firmly. Naruto and Hanata, she answered, suddenly holding her menu in front of her face. And question mark, he sounded hurt, I thought we were done hiding. Isn't that why we came here tonight question mark? There's a difference between going out in public, and being caught on a date by that loudmouth, she said, apologetically, besides, if he catches me here, he'll lose all respect for me. You mean, he'll be harder to intimidate, he smiled at her. 
Isn't that what I said? Question mark. Anko was annoyed that he found this humorous. The male John and sighed at his lover. Do you want to leave? Then question mark. No, she said suddenly. The snake summoner blushed a tiny bit and admitted, I've been looking forward to this. If not, that really doesn't leave us many options. We can either go on with our date, hope that he's too absorbed to notice us, and take the consequences if he does see us. Or, we can use the transformation jutsu to disguise ourselves. Though he had not been serious at the end but she latched onto the idea. That's perfect, she smirked, we'll pick disguises that there's no way that numbskull could see through. I was joking, he protested. Come on, she purred ily, if we pull this off, I'll reward you later. All right, I'll hold you to that, he chuckled at his date, or to me as the case may be. I knew you just loved me for my body, she teased. I love you for your direct, aggressive, mildly self-loathing mind, he leaned in close to whisper, your killer body is just a side benefit. He kissed her quickly, and she squeezed his hand in affection, and in thanks. After informing their waiter of their intent, the two shinobi went to the restrooms, and emerged as a slightly younger, civilian couple. The waitress dropped off their meals 20 minutes later. She had managed to fulfill Naruto's odd request, and set a finger bowl of pear juice next to his plate. He made a mental note to give her a better tip. After setting out the dishes and drinks, she walked back to the kitchen. One of the chefs stepped out of the door, and both observed the blonde teen. Naruto picked up his fork, and dipped it in the thin, yellow liquid. He tasted the juice, and smiled. Perfect, he said. He sliced a thin strip of the beef, and dunked it quickly in the pear extract. He bit into the steak and his grin broadened. The chef looked fascinated, and hurried back into the kitchen, while the server returned to her rounds. Hanata looked at him in confusion, and he slid the bowl in between them. Try it, he statement was both an offer and a hearty suggestion. She looked down at her own entree, dubious. She cut off a small corner of the sirloin, and touched it gently to the pool of liquid. She touched the beef to her tongue, and then began to chew on it thoughtfully. Her eye went wide from surprise. The sweet flavor of the pear juice complemented the rich taste of the beef perfectly. Naruto, that is great, she told him, how did you discover this question mark? Just experimenting in the kitchen, he answered. Experimenting in the kitchen question mark, she was even more confused. Yeah, I kinda know how to cook, he was a little anxious to admit that, Jiraiya wouldn't just train me. He made me cook and clean to earn my lessons. And ramen wasn't good enough for him. So, you like to cook question mark? No, he shook his head, I hate cooking. But I can, if I have to. Oh, she looked down, that's too bad. He took another bite, considering as he ground the potato between his molars. Well, maybe I could make a meal for you some time, he offered tentatively. She blushed, and dipped her next bite of steak in the pear juice, I'd like that. They ate the rest of their meal in relative silence, enjoying the excellent food. As Naruto was finishing his potatoes, and Hanata her vegetable, the house band started tuning up on stage. They both finished their steaks at roughly the same time, and Naruto turned his attention to the dance floor. A few couples had trickled onto the hardwood deck, and were swaying in time to the slow, opening tunes. Naruto quickly drank the last of his milk, and stood. He extended a hand to his companion. Shall we question Mark? She wrapped her fingers in his, and rose to stand beside him. They walked to the edge of the dance floor, and waited for the current song to end, their hands still clasped. As the tune wound down, they stepped onto the platform. A slow waltz began to emerge from the instruments, and Naruto wrapped his arm around Hanata. He placed his fingers in the small of her back. He remembered the feel of her spine from when he spread suntan lotion on her back. He almost regretted he could not feel her soft skin through the satin dress. She placed her left hand on his shoulder, and untangled their hands, so they could have a more traditional grip. The couple started to rotate around the dance floor, keeping perfect time with the gentle music. For the first 40 minutes, the ninja pair blended in with the crowd, turning and stepping in pace with the orchestra. Then, Naruto leaned into Hanata's ear, and whispered something. She nodded with a tiny grin, and he regretfully disconnected from her. He slid through the other dances, quickly reaching the stage, where he flagged down the conductor. The musician walked to the edge of the bandstand, and crouched down. 
Naruto presented his case, and the director nodded. Well, the bandleader announced, we've had a request to pick up the pace for the next song, so I hope you are all in the mood. Naruto quickly made his way back to Hanata, whose eyes were sparkling with anticipation. He took her hands lightly. As the up-tempo music started, he pulled her quickly to him, and they separated just as fast. They stepped in again, but this time Naruto moved his right hand subtly outwards. Hanata caught the signal perfectly releasing his left hand with her right, and twirling away instead of simply hopping back. When they closed the gap, their free hands again linked. Naruto was impressed by her skill, and a mischievous twinkle formed in his eye. Ready question mark, he mouthed, and she nodded, slightly nervous. Here we go. Naruto brought their hands together, and on cue, the pair each rotated in place. Their hands still connected, so their arms formed an arch on the back beat. Naruto gave her the next direction, and they dropped one set of hands again. This time they twisted in different directions, so they both faced the same way. They continued the rotation, and ended up back to back. They finally let go, and each side stepped to the left, their right arms trailing along one another until their hands caught like hooks. Naruto tugged Hanata, spinning her back, finally placing her right hand back in his left. As the two teams' moves increased in complexity, the rest of the crowd stopped dancing, instead forming a parameter to watch them. He's pretty good, commented the fictional brunette to her equally disguised boyfriend, they both are. Hanata doesn't surprise me, he told her, I heard she took some private lessons after the academy, to work on her footwork. But Naruto, he still can throw me a curve sometimes. Naruto pulled slightly on her hands, and Hanata jumped closer. His hands shifted to her hips, and hers to his shoulder, and he lifted her lightly, swinging her first to his left, and then to his right. He set her down smoothly, and they restored the grips as the music demanded they step apart. His next prompt made her blush slightly, but she executed the step, releasing his hands so they could bump their right hips, and then left hips. As the melody began to reach its apex, Naruto crossed their hands, and turned Hanata so her back was to him. They hopped apart, and together like that, then he turned her back. Then he spun her clockwise, then counterclockwise. The song ended, and on the final note, Naruto dipped Hanata low, only inches from the floor. His face was perilously close to hers. They straightened, and the other patrons started to applaud, as did some of the band and wait staff. Seeing Hanata was breathing a little heavy, he led her back to the table. She sat thankfully. What can I get you question mark, he asked. Oh, a root beer, please, she said gratefully, thank you, Naruto. The boy made his way over to the bar. The crowd was getting thicker, as people entered the club strictly to dance. A large root beer, and a large apple juice, the genin ordered. As he lingered while the drink mixer poured, he noticed an unfamiliar man at the end of the bar, glaring at him. Uzumaki dismissed the minor intrusion, and carried the beverages back to his date. Sorry it took so long, he set the glass before her, it's starting to get a little busy. No, thank you, Naruto, she told him again. She lifted the cup, and sipped the soda lightly. You are very good, Naruto, she complimented him. You're no slouch, yourself, he answered back, you knew every single move I threw at you. She turned red again, but her face also showed pride. Like I said, I love dancing, she explained, so I took some extra courses. They talked about dancing while they rested and rehydrated. They watched the other couples, occasionally commenting, and both trying to pick up some new moves. By the time they were ready to return to the deck, the crowd had started to thin. Many of the couples who had arrived early had reached their limit, and left. And due to atmosphere and cost, the golden shoe did not draw a casual crowd, so there were fewer replacements. The young friends returned to the dance floor, and were given a wide berth. But this was not needed, this time they did not show off, but just danced gently within the rest of the patrons. After another 20 minutes, Hanata suddenly stepped back. Naruto, I, she kept glancing anxiously towards the back corner of the restaurant, unable to voice her need. Naruto managed not to grin, though only just, when he realized she was looking at the restrooms. Go ahead, he said carefully, I'll be at our table. I suppose I shouldn't have given her so much to drink, he chuckled after she left, making his way back to their, base of operations. 
He poured himself another glass of water, and pretended he wasn't watching for her return. Why Don, you just get out of here question mark, an angry voice slurred behind him. Uzumaki looked back, and recognized the man who had been glaring at him at the bar. You frelin monster, he continued, poking Naruto in the shoulder, you got a lot of nerve, pretending you're normal. Mixin' with good people, makin' us smell your stink. Get out of here, before I throw you out. That will be enough, the bartender was suddenly standing behind the drunk, pulling him out of Naruto's face. Wa question mark didn't you know what this ish question mark, the inebriated troublemaker growled. You mean the kid who saved the village from the one-tailed shukaku question mark, the retired ninja shot back, or maybe the one who convinced Lady Suna to become the hockage question mark. No, heesh da. If you finish that statement, the mix master said darkly, you'll be facing a lot more than one night in the drunk tank. The intoxicated man blanched, but forced a snarl. Forever. If he's not leaving, I am. He slammed a handful of bills into the bartender's chest, and swaggered towards the door. I'm sorry about that, Naruto-kun, the bartender offered. Don't worry about it, he hid his pain behind a grin, it's not your fault, and I'm used to it. When Hanata got back, she found Naruto staring into the water glass, a slightly melancholy look on his whiskered face. Naruto, what is wrong question mark, she asked. What question mark oh, hey Hanata, nothing's wrong, he answered unconvincingly. Are you not having a good time question mark, she looked down. No I wa, am having a great time, he told her. Not wanting her to get the wrong impression, he decided to tell her, look it's not a big deal, and I didn't want to spoil your night. But while you were gone, some guy was hassling me about, my tenant. It used to happen all the time, before the invasion. I guess I've gotten a little soft, if I'm letting it bother me. She looked at him with sympathy, do you want to leave question mark? No, he said quickly, then he settled, no. It's nothing really, a little exercise will get it out of my system. He stood, and grabbed her hand. She allowed him to drag her back to the dance floor, and tried to help him forget the hatred again. Naruto's bad mood faded quickly. Hanata's arms, wrapped around him, made the disdain of one stranger unimportant. The training partners danced and danced, until, at five minutes to midnight, the bandleader announced the next song would be the last. Can we end this on a high note question mark so to speak, the blonde Jenin asked. The finale number was another fast piece, and Naruto and Hanata again gave the remaining patrons an impressive display. Afterwards, Naruto settled their bill, leaving ample tips for both the waitress and bartender. As they exited the club, they saw almost two dozen people moving down the street towards them. The two shinobi paused, wary of such a large group at this time of night. But when the procession got closer, they recognized the leaders of the troop. Naruto broke out in a goofy grin. Gara, Temari, Kankuro, what are you guys doing here? Question mark, he asked, running over to them. Hey, kid, Kankuro waved slightly. We are stopping for the night on our way to the hidden mist village. Gara indicated the young looking genin trailing behind them. We will travel with the hidden leaf contingent tomorrow. What are you doing out so late? Question mark, Temari asked, looking at Hanata pointedly. Naruto could tell she was looking to make him pay for asking if she and Shikamaru were on a date, right after he returned to the village. I took Hanata dancing, the teen answered directly. Kankuro smirked, and Gara gave them his own version of a big smile. I assume you will be joining us? Question mark, Gara suggested. Yup, he nodded. In fact, I should probably get Hanata home, we're leaving pretty early. It was nice to see you all, Hanata sketched a bow, and the two leaf ninja walked towards the Hugo Manor. When the pair reached the girl's home they just stood there, not quite looking at one another. Naruto, Hanata finally forced out, I had a wonderful time. Yeah, me too. Thank you for coming, Hanata. You're welcome. They lapsed back into the uncomfortable silence. I should get going, he told, and then repeated, we're leaving tomorrow morning. Yes, she nodded. They both started to slowly lean closer, each fixated on the other's eyes. Good night, Hanata. Good night, Naruto. Less than an inch before their lips touched, a loud rattling occurred above them. Both teens looked up, to see Hyashi Hyuga staring down at them. I'm sorry, he said, unconvincingly, I was just trying to get a cross breeze.
It is a little stuffy in here. He drew back, and then stuck his head out again. By the way, Hanata, Kiba stopped by after dinner. He said something about going to see Kurenai and the baby. She nodded up at him. He moved away, but both teens could still sense his presence. Good night, Hanata, he said again, turning away. He started to walk back towards his apartment. Good night, Naruto, she said sadly. She reached for the door handle. Before her fingers met the grip, she felt two hands take hers. As she realized what was happening, two slightly rough lips pressed gently to her right cheek. And then, he was running away. Hanata barely made it inside, before she collapsed to her knees, her face bright red, and tears running down her cheeks. Lord Kazekage, another voice called to him softly, just after Naruto and Hanata disappeared. Gara recognized the Hokage's caretaker, and raised his hand to stop his troop. Thank goodness I found you, Shizun told him as she jogged over, the Hokage needs to talk to you, and Lord Kankuro and Lady Temari right away. Hear that, the puppet user said, Lord Kankuro. Temari rolled her eyes at her younger brother. Can this wait until morning? Question mark, the blonde Kunoiki yawned. But medical Jonan shook her head. She said to tell you this is an X-rank situation. Gara raised an eyebrow, and then addressed his confused siblings. Take the others to our hotel, and join us as quickly as you can, he instructed them, then asked of Shizun, we will be at your headquarters, correct question mark. She nodded. Then let's go, he began to move, but she interrupted him. I found you by accident. I am here to bring back someone else, she counted regretfully, although if Lady Sunid is correct, she should be here shortly. Before she finished the statement, a young couple emerged from the golden shoe. The woman had waist-length brown hair and dark, and almost navy blue eyes. The man was slightly taller with short blonde hair and green eyes. The man jumped slightly when he saw the crowd in the street, but his girl just pulled him along. Anko Mitarashi, Shizun said, and the woman froze. Then she took another step. Give it up, Anko, the dark-eyed doctor smirked, I know it's you. The Hokage wants to see you, right now. Damn it, the serpentine shinobi dismissed her jutsu. Her normal appearance returned, though her red and purple gown remained, come on, Shizun. No Anko, now, the ranking Jonan said sharply. All right, she groused, then whispered to her companion, sorry. You coming with us, dusty question mark, she asked Gara. Though most of the sand ninja were shocked by her impertinence, the Kazekage was amused. He nodded. Then hurry up, Anko ordered, and maybe I can get back before he falls asleep. When they reached Kanoa Ninja Ops, Shizun did not lead him up to the Hokage's office. Instead she led him down, underground. Three floors beneath the earth, they followed her into a small, darkened room. The first thing they noticed, before their eyes adjusted, was the large two-way mirror, and the four lit computer monitors. After they became accustomed to their dim surroundings, the Kazekage and Anko realized they were not alone. The Hokage and Kakashi Hataki were waiting for them. Anko looked through the glass, curious as to what was going on. In the stark room on the other side were Ibiki Morino, and a young man she did not recognize. Probably 18 or 19 years old, he was wearing typical, if somewhat shabby ninja clothes, and a headband she could not quite make out due to the glare. His hands were in ninja manacles, and her wrists chained to the chair. Numerous ninja scrolls were wrapped around his arms and chest, connected to laptops. The whole setup was in the middle of an advanced genjutsu seal. Why have you summoned me here? Question mark, Gara asked. The minor rise in his normally flat voice indicated his intrigue. I'm not going to say, Sunid told him. Anko started to protest but the Sanan cut her off. I don't want to color your opinions before you hear this. And I think we should wait for the Kazekage's advisors. Both of the newcomers accepted this, Gara graciously and Anko not so much. Shizun excused herself to wait for the other San siblings. All right, your audience is here, Abiki told the young man, let's take it again, from the top. My name is Shin Busata, and I am a genin of the true hidden sound village, the youth shifted his head, and they could all see his headband now. It was an inverted half note with a sharp symbol beside it. I have come here to request that the hidden leaf village assist in the liberation of our village. What the hell is he talking about? Question mark, Kankuro demanded, just before Anko could express a similar sentiment. Though Shin could not hear them in the interrogation room, Abiki received the question through his earpiece. 
The scarred ninja relayed it to the petitioner, though more politely. I suppose it will be easier to understand if I explain the history of the hidden sound, the self-proclaimed sound ninja offered, because, you see, the Otogaku was not originally the brainchild of Orokimaru. Though he helped them to build it, that village was the dream of two other shinobi. My parents. My mother was born in the village hidden in the mist, the daughter of a wealthy textile magnate. She became a ninja, against her father's wishes. Though he could not prevent her from becoming a genin, he blocked her attempts to find a teacher after graduation. She was eventually able to find a jonin who was above her father's influence or bribery. But it was not enough, because my grandfather was able to use his power over the 10th Mizukage to thwart her attempts to take the Chunin exam. In time she grew frustrated, and plotted to leave her home. She was able to make use of some less scrupulous jonin, and faked a decommissioning. Thus, she was able to leave the Kirigakur with all of her abilities, but without being labeled a rogue ninja. My father would be known to you. Jiro Busata was a chunin from this village, the young man continued, he was a medical specialist, and thought shinobi should be researching more simple and mundane jutsu to help civilians in everyday life. His team was sent on a mission to remove a bandit clan from the land of rice. But either the feudal lord lied, or he simply undervalued the rogues, because my father's two teammates were killed, and he was left for dead, with a wakazashi broken off in his right lung. That was when my mother found him. Though she was not an expert healer, she knew enough to keep him alive, long enough for him to teach her the techniques she needed to save him. It was very close, and she spent months nursing him back to health. They fell in love, and shared their mutual desire for a more open spread of knowledge. That was the genesis of the village hidden in the sound. Not a military outpost, but instead a ninja college. A place where any jutsu would be taught to any person who offered equal compensation in knowledge or money. Soon after my father recovered, and they were married, my parents met Orokimaru. They did not know he was exiled, they just knew that he was a living legend. And he shared their love of knowledge. So they entrusted him with their vision, and he offered to help them. Emboldened by their new ally, my parents began to gather scrolls and books of ninjutsu, and to consult with retired ninja and honorable rogues. But they still lacked for two things. Soon after I was born my grandfather died, leaving everything to his only surviving family member. My mother returned to the hidden mist for the time in years. But she only remained long enough to empty her bank accounts, and sell off her companies. Now my parents had the money they needed. When they met up with Orokimaru again, he had acquired the other resource they lacked, a location. As they began to build their village, they were blinded to the serpent's darkness. While they recruited learned masters, and talented beginners, Orokimaru recruited anyone who would agree to follow him. While my parents followed the edicts of the Council of Shadows, Orokimaru readily practiced forbidden jutsu. While they focused on gaining knowledge, he accepted any mission that was offered. Seven years ago, they could no longer deny what was happening. Orokimaru had joined with the Akatsuki, a group known to them. Sound Ninja had been accused of assassinations in the lands of earth and fire. They went to confront Orokimaru, even though they were no match for him. And he killed them. He paused for a second, my mother knew they would die. She warned me, never to oppose Orokimaru. She said I should keep our people safe, and to wait. And now the time I have waited for is come. Orokimaru is dead, and Kabuto Yakushi has taken control of my parents' village. But many of those who remained neutral out of out of fear of Orokimaru now side with the true sound. And some of those who were loyal to the serpent will not follow his apprentice. However, we are not strong enough on our own. Orokimaru taught his followers more advanced killing techniques, and would not send us on missions. So even though our numbers are now equal, or even greater, we are in general weaker and less experienced. But with the help of the Hidden Leaf Village, we can defeat our mutual enemy. What does he suggest question mark, Gara asked. Again, Morino relayed the question. We wish to hire Leaf Shinobi to eliminate Kabuto and his strongest soldiers, the Shin explained, though we may not have all of the funds needed to pay for such a mission, we are also willing to offer access to our libraries, for free, for one year, once the mission is complete. Well question mark, Sunad asked Anko and the Sand Ninja. It's a trap, Anko insisted incredulously, I can't believe you're buying this load of bullshit. With the honesty Genjutsu, plus all those detection scrolls, it is unlikely he could lie, Tamari countered, 
in such a long speech, he should have tripped up at some point. Also, this fits with some of the of the questions and inconsistencies we had noticed about the hidden sound village. Why would Orokimaru build a village question mark it's not in his character, Kakashi pointed out, and where did he get the money question mark. We investigated his story, Shizun added, his mother, Hana Aino, was a hidden mist ninja, until she retired at age 16. And she did inherit a substantial fortune when her father died. And as for his father, I knew Jiro Busata, soon it interrupted, he was always going on about how we should teach civilians simple jutsu to make their lives easier. The kid looks a lot like him. Of course, it would be nice if we could do a DNA test, but the blood types match up. Fine, the purple-haired Kunoiki snapped, so maybe that part of it is true. But that doesn't change the fact that the most important part is a lie, and that makes this a trap. What do you mean question mark? Gara's tone was, as always, even. Orokimaru ISN, T dead, she shouted. She downed the shingpa of her gown, and nearly ripped the fabric as she yanked it down. She did not care that she was exposing herself to them, as she turned to show them the livid black mark where her neck met her shoulder. If Orokimaru were dead, I would finally be free of him, free of this curse. She told them, I was told the only way this seal would go away was if Orokimaru removed it, or if he died. It's still there, still burning every second of every day. So that bastard can't be dead. Anko, Shizun said softly, we don't know for sure that Orokimaru's death will remove the curse mark. That's just speculation. We don't know enough to be sure. More likely, the Hokage interrupted, even after the snake dies, it will take weeks, or even months to fade away. Anko glared at Kankuro, who was staring at her mostly uncovered chest. Only after he noticed her, and looked away, did she put her dress back into place. I don't buy it, she said, slightly less vehemently. We have reports to support that, Kakashi handed her a dossier, during the incident with the vampire, Naruto told Sasuke about Orokimaru and Itachi's past. Afterwards, Sasuke took almost 10 days to make a journey that should have taken two. He was in the sound hideout for just over three hours, and left with two of Orokimaru's strongest young recruits. Orokimaru has not been seen since, and Kabuto has been issuing orders that are contrary to Orokimaru's previous plans. All part of the plot, Anko's voice told them she knew she was reaching. Then why involve us? Temari asked, ignoring the leaf Jonan's argument. Two reasons, the Hokage smirked, the first is simple survival. I have considered the possibility that this is a trap. That kid's plan calls for eight teams, give or take, she told them, but if instead the leaf and sand each send six teams, we'll have 50% more people on the ground, with less risk to either village. That gives us a better chance either to escape if it is a trap, or to win if this is real. Plus for the second part of his plan, with shinobi from both of our villages making use of their facilities, they will have better support to solidify their control of the village. Kankuro and Anko both displayed a small surprise, not having realized the full reason for Busata's offer. That is why you called this an x rank mission, Gara observed. That term again, Kankuro frowned, what's an x rank mission question mark? The Kazekage looked at the Hokage, who shrugged back. It is a special designation of the Council of Shadows, he explained to his siblings, a level beyond s minus rank. X rank missions are missions that require the direct action of one of the five cage, or the combined power of two or more hidden villages. Temari nodded her understanding. The second reason, soon it resumed, growing somber, is the intelligence Gara provided me with, the fact that Orokimaru, Kimimaro, and Kabuto were present in the Sunagaku when the fourth Kazekage and his advisors were murdered. Kimimaro is long dead, and now it seems Orokimaru is gone. She looked directly at Gara. Kabuto is your last chance at any kind of justice or revenge. Gara nodded, and his sister shuddered, recognizing the dark, hateful gleam in his pale blue eyes. I presume the intent is to mask the attack behind the Chunin exam, the leader of the Hidden Sand said evenly. Yeah, with their participating teams in the Land of Water, it gives us that much more of an advantage. Then we had better start planning, Gara stated. Abiki, bring our guest to map room number one. Soon it instructed over the microphone, so Shin could hear her, but for now, let's leave the manacles on. The Tokubatsu Jonan nodded, and began to disconnect the lie detectors. Naruto looked over at the clock when a knock at his door woke him. 3.27 a.m. 
whoever it was knocked again. Zhu a minute, he groaned, pulling a white tank top over his bare chest, as he swung his feet off the bed. His first attempt to stand failed, but he managed on the second try. The genin trudged over to the door, and pulled it open. Grandma soonered, his head cleared slightly when he saw who was waiting, uh, what's going on question mark. I'm sorry to wake you, Naruto, the hockage seemed apprehensive, but I needed to speak with you right away. Sure, he murmured, confused by her unusual attitude, come in. The doctor looked at her young charge's room, unable to hide her disapproval at its fairly dismal condition. She sat down in the chair sitting beside his tiny table, and indicated he should sit too. Stifling a yawn, the teenager complied, dropping onto the edge of his so very inviting mattress. Naruto, there is a mission, soon it started hesitantly, a very important mission. And one of the team leaders has requested you personally. A mission question mark, Naruto jumped up and started towards his armoire with a broad grin, it must be really cool for you to wake me up, like this. He trailed off as his brain caught up with the rest of him. Wait, a mission now question mark, he turned back to her, looking confused, but I'm leaving for the Chunin exam in a couple of hours. The leader of the Hidden Leaf Village sighed. She started to say something, but Uzumaki got there first. That's why you came here at 3 a.m., he deduced, no small feat for him, you're gonna order me to skip the Chunin exam and go on this mission. No, she said gently, I'm going to ask you to skip the Chunin exam and go on this mission. You have waited long enough for this second chance, and you have more than earned it. We can find a way to do this job without you. So I'm giving you a choice. Besides, she forced a smirk, not willing to give him too much, if I force you to do this against your will, you'll be distracted, and worth less than usual. Naruto let the jab pass, considering what she had said. Can you at least tell me what this mission is? Question mark. No, the Hokage shook her head again, this is need to know only. If you choose to go on to the hidden mist village, I cannot risk you knowing. He digested that, adding it to the rest. Is it really that important question mark, he asked quietly. If we succeed, it could change the world, she said firmly, leaving him no doubt as to her earnestness, and in the worst possible failure scenario, we will be in almost the same dire straits we faced when I took over. Naruto sat back down on his bed, looking at the floor. She waited, unable to see his face. All right, he whispered, then he looked up, determined, all right I'll do it. Naruto, are you sure question mark? Yup. I mean my mom stayed a genin, and she won your respect. Besides, there'll be another exam in six months. He forced a chuckle, it's the sort of choice a chunin would make, right question mark. She smiled slightly, and nodded. Naruto, I promise that whatever it takes, I will see that you participate in the hidden cloud exam next spring. Even if I have to bust Hanata, Sakura, or Shikamaru back to genin so they can be your partners. Partner, he suddenly remembered, hey, what about Hanabi question mark. Soon it realized she had forgotten his temporary teammate as well. She shrugged, and told him, Hanabi Hugo was being allowed to participate as your partner. If you don't go, then she can't either. Does that change your decision question mark. No, he answered, I don't want to let Hanabi down, but I have to do what I think is right. If you want, I can tell her I'm forcing you to go. No. I don't want to lie to her, he smiled ruefully, I'll tell her. Soon it stood, impressed by his integrity. The briefing will most likely be after lunch. We have some last details to hash out, and then I need some sleep. I'll send Genma or Rado around later with the details. She saw herself out, but Naruto did not go back to bed. Instead he dressed slowly, and then left his apartment. Naruto stood outside the Hyuga Manor, not sure what he should do. He couldn't just sneak in. He didn't know where Hanabi's room was, and if he got caught, he didn't want to think about what Hyashi Hyuga might do given an excuse. But he also didn't want to wake up the whole house. He decided to go with the old cliché. He walked around the house to Hanata's room, collecting pebbles along the way. After he found the right window, he began to bounce the small stones off it, trying to wake the occupant. After the fourth rock nearly struck his face on the rebound, the lights went on in the room. The window opened, and Uzumaki realized he had the wrong room. What do you want? Naruto question mark, Hyashi's tone was dry, but held just a hint of danger, 
attempting to arrange a late night rendezvous with my daughter question mark. Actually, sir, Naruto played it polite as a matter of self-preservation, I'm trying to find Hanabi. I need to talk to her about the Chunin exam. Can't it wait until after sunrise question mark, his anger abated, the clan leader was just annoyed, you'll be leaving together then. No, Naruto said pointedly, we won't. Hiashi did not need the Byakugan to see how serious Naruto was. I'll wake her, he told the boy, and then I will meet you at the main gate. Naruto nodded and trotted back to the front of the house. The elder Genin told father and daughter about the Hokage's visit, and what she had said, leaving off only her grandiose statements about how the mission could end. You're going, aren't you? Question mark. Hanabi stabbed while he was trying to find the words to tell her, after all, if you had turned her down, you wouldn't have dragged me out of bed at four in the morning. Hanabi, I'm sorry, Naruto bowed his head, but she said if this fails, it could hurt the village. I couldn't say no. Nor should you, Hiashi affirmed, letting his relief show, that is a very responsible decision, Naruto, putting the village before your own advancement. The possessed blonde was not fooled by the sudden support, but was not about to turn down an ally, either. Hanabi did not appear to agree with them. Listen, Hanabi, I'll make it up to you. The next exam, we'll compete together, no matter what. You assume I'll still be that desperate in six months, she said coldly. She refused to look at him, and after a minute, Naruto stood. I really am sorry, Hanabi. Hiashi showed Naruto out, and Hanata slipped into the room. He made the right choice, Hanata insisted. That's a matter of opinion, the younger girl counted bluntly. Would you have chosen the other way? Question mark, the fifth master of the Raisingen pressed. Yes, one genin is not going to make a difference. Hanata considered pointing out the contradiction in that statement, but instead just shook her head sadly. If you always put yourself before others, the elder sibling counseled as she left, one day you will look around and find you are all alone. Naruto looked around at the crowd gathered in the arena. Though he recognized all of the more than 20 leaf shinobi, he was the only genin. There were almost as many sand ninja, and the only ones he knew by name were Gara and Temari, though he had seen a few of the others before. And there was someone else, wearing a headband he had never seen before, standing with the leaders of the two villages. Though the Kazekage was standing beside her, the Hokage did most of the talking. She introduced the guest, and explained quickly that he was part of a splinter group of the Hidden Sound village that wanted peace and friendly relations with the other villages. She told them that, except for the two medical support teams, the job was to kill or otherwise neutralize Kabuto's most powerful supporters. Given that we can't guarantee the location of any of the targets, we're not going to try to assign specific tasks, she informed them, with a single exception. The Kazekage's team will be going after Kabuto Yakushi personally. If any of the other teams find him, do not engage, just report back his position. She then went through the individual sound shinobi they were seeking, providing them with all of the information gathered by both villages, and supplied to them by Shin Busata. The others studied the sketches or photos intently, but Naruto was distracted by what Sunid had said about Gara. All right, we will be leaving tomorrow, so our arrival coincides with the start of the Chunin exam, the leader concluded, everyone get some rest, and make sure you have all the equipment you need. Leaf team 7, 8, and 10, I need to speak with you before you go. Aruka turned to leave, and found Anko and Yugao together. The Azuki looked uncomfortable, while Mitarashi was just pissed off. Well, it looks like team Hizashi is back together, he tried to sound light. Anko turned her glare on him, and Yumino barely stopped himself from cringing. And Yugao went from merely awkward to sad. Look, we are professionals, right? The teacher decided he would have to be the adult here, regardless of what your personal feelings are, we can work together, can't we? Question mark. The former Anbu Kunoiki looked from him, back to Anko. The snake user just rolled her eyes. I'm not the one who broke up the team, the curse-marked woman stated, pointedly. And then she stalked away, throwing back, see you two tomorrow. Okay, what's up question mark, Naruto asked. The three teams had crowded into Sunid's office, along with Gara and Temari. You heard me say that the Kazekage's team would be going after Kabuto, right question mark, she asked back. Yeah, I was surprised a cage would be going on a mission, he told her. Well, Gara has a special request. She looked over to her counterpart, who took over. 
Naruto, you have the most combat experience, both with Kabuto and against him. That is why I requested you be on my team. You work well with Hanata Huga and Sakura Haruno, and their abilities as a scout and a medic round out the team, so I have also requested them. Unless any of you three can offer me a valid reason to the contrary, the Hokage told her soldiers, I'll grant the Kazekage's request. You three will work with the Kazekage, with Gara as the team leader. Any objections question mark. She looked at Sakura, who was still somewhat uncomfortable around Gara, and Hanata, who had an issue with Kabuto since learning he had saved her life. But neither girl protested. Okay, since that leaves team 7 and 8 shorthanded, Kiba and Shino, you two will be with Kakashi and Sai. Shino nodded, and Kiba eyed Sai suspiciously. And you three, the Sanan addressed Ino Shika Cho, each team will have at least one Jonan. With Asuma's death, you need a team leader. Here it comes, Shikamaru groaned. Temari has generously offered to be your squad leader, she informed them, and in the interest of cooperation, I've accepted. There it is, the genius put his hand to his hand as if the news pained him. Temari smirked at him. Nice to work with you, Ino winked at the older blonde. That's it, the hawkage concluded, like I said before, get some rest and make sure you are ready. Hey, Gara, Naruto ran up to his high-ranking friend, where's Kankuro? Question mark. He left this morning, the Kazekage answered, he is leading our contingent to the hidden mist for the exam. We must keep up appearances. Besides we cannot disappoint our genin. Naruto nodded, I didn't think of that. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Naruto, Hanata caught up with him as they left. I was going to give this to you after you became a chunin, she extended the package she had held sandwiched between her body and her left arm, but I thought you might need it on the mission. He took the wrapped present, and tore off the paper. But after he removed the masking, he suddenly became apprehensive. He slowly opened the box, and set aside the lid. Inside was black leather scabbard for a broadsword. It had a steel inlay of the canoa leaf, with a line of the metal running from the tip of the symbol to the tip of the scabbard. It had a bandolier harness. He turned the box over to spill it out, and saw that the shape was a cover, instead of a slot for a sword, there was a perfect circle to hold a staff blade. I thought it would be better than simply sticking Kitsune in your belt, she offered, unable to read his expression, and you don't want to have to spend time and chakra to summon it. Hanata, this is incredible, but I can't, he started to protest, but she subtly shifted her left arm, setting off a slight clinking on her left wrist. Naruto saw the bracelet he had given her. Right, he grinned, thank you, Hanata. He threw the sheath over his shoulder, summoned Kitsune, and slid the weapon into its new container. It was a perfect fit. I enhanced the scabbard, she told him, so it will hide Kitsune's chakra signature. So it won't be detectable by Jutsu or Keke Genkai. That's great, he was impressed. Then he sobered. Are you ready for this question mark this is more than any other mission. I mean, we're basically going to war. I'll be okay, she was happy for his concern, what about you question mark. I'm gonna get to kick Kabuto's ass. That's more than enough. She was amused, but not surprised by his answer. There is one thing the Hokage did not mention, Shin Busata told the 48 assembled ninja the next morning. The only way to reach the valley, where the main hidden sound village is located, is to pass through a series of caves. And the only way to navigate these caves with the key and the song, he took a necklace out from under his shirt. It consisted of five different, small tuning forks. He flicked one, and they all heard a clear tone. So when we reach the cavern, you will all need to follow me very carefully. Is everyone ready? Question mark, Gara asked. A quick murmur of assent passed over the assembled legion. Good, then move out. That will be all for this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and comment down below for more videos. Goodbye.